Hi everybody, Ace of Hearts Fox here, and welcome to another Pursuit Friday video. Today's video is 10 tips for commissioning a freelance artist. So let's get started. Tip number one, send a clearly written email. A full-time freelancer might answer dozens of emails in a given week. If you have a clearly laid out and well-written email, it makes the artist's job that much easier. Also, if you're applying to work with a more in-demand artist, like a fursuit maker or maybe a big digital artist on the internet, a clearly written email will make them way more inclined to work with you. So that kind of helps you and the artist a little bit. Tip number two, look for their price sheets. Lots of artists on the internet will have a sheet of prices on their website or on their social media. This will give you a full range of the different types of services they provide and their general rates for each one. By checking their price sheet, it saves them one more email that they don't have to answer. Plus, you get your answer a little quicker. Instead of sending them an email asking them how much they charge for a certain service, you get to see it right away on their price sheet. So that's another one that helps both you and the artist. And now, tip number three. Make sure you're serious before you ask for a quote. For a full-time freelance artist, getting a commission might mean being able to pay their bills on time or handle any other pending expenses. It's just a bit of a general courtesy to ask for a quote only when you have the money to pay for it. Now, there's nothing wrong with declining a quote if it's just simply too far out of your budget. Just make sure that when you do ask for a quote, you do seriously intend on purchasing one of their services. And speaking of services, tip number four is to read their terms of service. Remember, you're not downloading iTunes, you're working with a person. So before you scroll to the bottom and click I agree, make sure you read everything that they've laid out. An artist's terms of service can include anything from refund policies all the way down to how much you need to pay for a payment plan. And if something isn't clearly laid out in someone's terms of service, ask! Just make sure you know exactly what you're agreeing to before you agree to it. Crazy, right? And now, tip number five. Know exactly what you want before you commission someone. There's nothing wrong with a few edits here and there on an art piece, but those edits do take time, so it's best to keep them to a minimum. And now tip number six. Reply to email chains. This is actually a tip that I learned from some of my friends that are full-time artists. When you're communicating back and forth with a fursuit maker or a digital artist, make sure you reply to their emails instead of writing brand new ones. This keeps everything in the same thread or chain, that way the artist's inbox stays way more organized. And now tip number seven, be patient. This is something I'm kind of guilty of too, where I'll commission an artist and I'll be super super excited and I'll be checking my inbox every day for an update, and then I start to get a little impatient. Now there's nothing wrong with getting really really excited and looking forward to your brand new completed art piece, but just understand that the artist probably has other people in their queue and you'll have to wait your turn. Now if you need something before a convention, maybe it's a themed badge or a fursuit part you need, make sure you communicate your deadlines to the artist before they start working on it. Also, if work in progress pictures are really, really important to you, make sure you convey that to the artist before they start working on everything. And now, tip number eight. I love doing eight because I get to use my paws. Anyways, tip number eight. If you can afford it, tip your artists. In my experience, artists really, 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 five hours later, really, 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 really appreciate it when you give them any amount of tip. Whether it's adding on a little bit more to a PayPal payment or sending them a Kofi, a little bit really goes a long way. Especially when it comes down to, I need this money to eat. <laughs> so if you have any artists that you really want to support, go ahead and send them a tip. So remember this tip and send a tip. Yeah. 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 And now, tip number nine, keep things business related. It's really easy to get excited to communicate with an artist, especially if you're a huge fan of their work, but try to keep all your messages business related. That way, when they receive a message from you, they'll know it's important. And now for tip number 10, when you get your art, share it. When you receive your finished art piece, whether it's a fursuit or a sketch or a digital piece or anything at all, make it your phone wallpaper, share it on social media, show it to your friends. Who knows, maybe someone that sees the piece that you got will want to commission that artist in the future. Either way, I'm sure they'll appreciate seeing how enthusiastic you are about something that they created. So thanks for watching 10 Tips for Commissioning a Freelance Artist, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. If you really liked this video, go ahead and hit like and subscribe down below. Also, if you guys have any tips that I missed for commissioning artists, go ahead and leave them down below in a comment. I do read every single comment, and I try to reply to as many as possible. Also, if you guys want to directly support the channel, my Patreon and merch store links in the description below. Well, that's all I got for you guys today. Thanks again for watching, everybody. My name's Ace of Hearts Fox, and I will see you all in the next video. Pssh.